Hey there, Doc. Dr. Scott Doherty coming to you from Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Uh, actually, right here on the campus of the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. Beautiful campus. Uh, actually, a campus I've always wanted to visit. Uh, first time I've actually gotten out this way. I've been in the area of Raleigh, um, Wake Forest, but never actually been to Chapel Hill. So, getting to see the campus for the first time. Had a fascination with it since uh, I was in eighth grade playing basketball and Michael Jordan was playing at University of North Carolina. So, uh, glad I finally got here, got to see this campus. If you ever get a chance, check it out. Uh, anyways, today I want to talk to you about uh, kind of funny how things come together. I was listening to a, a podcast with Tim Ferriss uh, about decision-making fatigue. Uh, and I'll actually go ahead and uh, post that link down below for you to listen to. Uh, short episode, only like 18 minutes long, uh, but definitely some very, very good information. It was just kind of on my mind. Uh, and then it played out here in my real life uh, with some evaluations I did this week, actually twice. One in particular that... that um, comes up, and I don't even know if I mentioned the subject yet, but, but it's about decision fatigue and the fact that we only have so much energy uh, in the course of a day to make decisions. Uh, so we should plan our lives around that and, and be very good about it. It's something I've always been fascinated with and I've always tried to have good morning routines to make sure that uh, my days went as planned because obviously you know uh, the more you, that happens to you in the day and you have to make the decisions, the, the worse the end of your day goes. Uh, and that's kind of what, again, played out here. I showed up uh, a little early for an evaluation. Uh, and the doctor was running a little behind. And the reason he was running a little bit behind was very evident as I stood there in the waiting room and watched him process a few patients. Uh, I actually saw him uh, see probably about eight patients go through. And every one of them required decisions from him. From, his staff required decisions from him. And he was one of those classic doctors that uh, suffers from burnout, uh, which I'm hearing quite a bit lately. And again, all really, I shouldn't say all, but a lot of it comes back to this uh, same idea of, of decision fatigue. Him in particular, again, just very obvious that um, his staff, every time a patient walked the door, had to ask him a question. Uh, what their frequency was, uh, what kind of therapy he wanted on them. Uh, it wasn't, you know, at the end of the day I asked him about it. He said it was written down somewhere, but I didn't see it where it was written down either. So the staff certainly didn't know. And that just caused, that just ate at him. So he'd be in the middle of adjustment, have to get interrupted uh, to make a decision. Uh, and again, it was a decision he's already made. Uh, he just wasn't on paper written anywhere, so he had to make the decision again. And that really burned on him. So as the end of the day, he was tired. He was burned out. He's not seeing the volume of patients he wants to see. It's just that every patient requires more energy in order to make those decisions. Heard it again today, just right here at Chapel Hill, actually. Um, Doc was just saying that his staff was good, but they couldn't make those decisions. And I said, well, it's not really the staff's fault. Uh, those decisions shouldn't need to be made. Um, there should be systems in place, if then rules, that uh, they can make those decisions comfortably. Uh, without worrying about what you're going to think about it and having to go check with you. So decision fatigue comes in a lot uh, in our lives. In chiropractic practice, it comes in those ways I just talked about. But even with your overall life, especially when we're talking about growing a practice, a lot of docs tell me they don't have any energy left over. Like wh where are they going to find more energy to, to grow a practice? And hopefully you know my philosophy about right now. Growing a practice actually should be less energy. It should be easier uh, to jump to the next level. But besides that, uh, even if you are looking for more energy, um, you've got to remove a lot of those decisions. Um, <laughs> I've heard this a lot, and, and you may you may have actually said it. I know I've said it once or twice in my life. You know, your spouse asks you what you want for dinner, and you're like, oh, I made so many decisions all day long. I don't want to make that decision too. Just have dinner ready. Are you familiar? Uh, that's probably not where I'm, I'm recommending you cut down on your decision fatigue. That's a place where you, you might want to work together with your spouse to get things done. But a lot of other decisions can be handled. Uh, examples from my own life. Uh, my morning routine is pretty solid. Uh, I know. When I wake up, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to the gym. I know usually what I'm going to have for breakfast almost always because I make my breakfasts on Sunday. Uh, I make all my breakfasts for the week and they're just sitting there in a the Tupperware. So all I have to do is grab them. I don't have to think about what to make or cook or where to stop for breakfast. Uh, it just takes away that one decision in the morning that I don't have to make. Uh, you know, I see some people going to the grocery store in the, in the morning and they're making all these decisions. Then they go to work and they're just already fatigued. And it, it really does take a biological toll on you. So it's something you need to be aware of. Uh, but again, morning routine is probably the key thing here to avoid decision fatigue. Morning routine as well as having those set of if-then rules for your staff when you get to the office. So you can just go about your day. You know what's coming. You know what's going to happen. You know what you're having for breakfast. You know if you're going to the gym. Still get a kick out of my wife every night. She asks me if I'm going to the gym in the morning. <laughs> I've gone to the gym every morning uh, that she's known me. And still, are you going to work out tomorrow? Yes, sweetie, I'm going to work out tomorrow. Uh, I know these things. I know what my routine is like. And again, my first hour of my day is very, very well planned without any interruptions so that I don't have to make decisions. Um, now, obviously, I have kids, so every once in a while something pops up. But for the most part, two, thing, two tips for you. One, 
get them on your team. Uh, make sure that by the time you get to the office, you haven't made many decisions yet. You feel very good, you feel fresh, uh, you haven't been worn down with decision fatigue already. Number two, really work with your staff to empower them to make decisions on their own uh, with if-then type rules or checklists so that they know exactly what to do, what is expected of them, and they don't have to bug at you all day long. Because again, I see, I see it happen a lot. I said it's just happened twice this week, but uh, where there's just constant interruptions uh, between patients for a doctor. And that doctor can't see any more patients because there's so many interruptions, where if we remove those interruptions, we remove everything between the patients, he could probably see twice as many uh, patients. So look at that in your own life, in your own practice, see where the decision fatigue comes in for you, see where the staff creates decision fatigue and remove those things. I guarantee you, you'll feel a lot better, you'll have a lot more energy at the end of the day, and maybe when you go home and your wife asks you what you want for dinner, didn't mean to be uh, wife or husband asks you what you want for dinner, maybe you'll actually participate in that because you'll still have some decision-making uh, left over. So again, I'm going to put that podcast from Tim Ferriss down below. Uh, great listen. It's only 18 minutes long. I think you'll get a lot out of it. Uh, I certainly like hearing the comments uh, on these videos, uh, the, the beautiful places I get to see, the campuses I go to. So uh, put any comments you have down below uh, below the podcast, which is below the video, and I'll talk to you on my next trip.